Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to another transfer update video for you guys today. And in this video, we're going to be discussing all things Raheem Sterling in light of his move to Chelsea Football Club, which may already be announced by the club by the time this video comes out. We were told that it was meant to be fully done, fully announced by today. It might not be a case today. It might be tomorrow. But we know Sterling should be part of the Chelsea squad that travels to pre-season in America by the end of the week. So expect it to be guaranteed to be done by day by then. But before we start this video, as always, we're aiming for 500 likes on this video. So if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that like button. If you guys want to be the first to know whenever we release any new content on this channel, hit the bell notification button as well. And also press the subscribe button just to help the channel out. What's good for us, it's good for the channel. And what's good for the channel is hopefully good for you. So guys, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, press the bell notification button as well and get your Chelsea Fan TV hat trick. And let's get straight into the news. Chelsea and City have been in talks over Raheem Sterling for the last two to three weeks. But there's finally been an agreement on the fee. It is a final fee around 45 million. There may be a couple add-ons in there as well. But like I've already said in previous videos and live streams, if you guys check out my channel as well. I don't really mind too much about the add-ons. The add-ons will all be performance-based, and if he hits those targets, if the team reaches those targets, then it's fine if City get a little bit of extra money because we will be progressing as a club. The final fee is around 45 million, and it's a similar fee to the Gabriel Jesus to Arsenal fee, which is what Manchester City wanted as well. They wanted to get rid of both of them for around the price of 100 million, and they've succeeded in that remark. And I said personally, I think 45 million is a very fair fee for Raheem Sterling for what he brings to the team, for his pedigree, his CV, his experience. I think it's a very good deal for us and it instantly bolters our attack. Obviously, we do need more transfers with it. The Rafinha situation is still dragging on. Barcelona are just being broken. They're just holding out for Chelsea just to be difficult. But that deal could potentially be across the line within the space of a few days. Leeds are running out of patience. Chelsea are kind of running out of patience as well. And Rafinha does want to join Barcelona, but Chelsea's his dream club. So you could see that transfer potentially happening. Wyatt talks about Ronaldo to Chelsea as well. We won't speak too much about that until it's actually going until it's actually going ahead, until we actually see a transfer bid drop. But let's hope. Let's hope. But on to Raheem Sterling, like we already said, Chelsea will hope Sterling will be able to fly with their squad to the US at the end of the week. He is in Jamaica, he's not in England right now. So if, he ha if there is any announcement, expect it to be like the Romelu Lukaku announcement where it's just taken with somebody's iPhone and he's just holding the shirt. But uh, all we want is the announcement. All we want is the confirmation. I want to know what shirt number he's getting as well so I can get that on the back of my shirt. And Sterling has already said that he is impressed by Tuchel's plan and ambition. Sterling thinks his career will be best served under Tuchel. And Matt Law also reported that Sterling was impressed by his plans, his ambitions for him during tour. He also attracted interest from the likes of Real Madrid, among many others, but has been swung by Chelsea's strong desire, both publicly and privately. And from a personal perspective, it does suit him as well because he gets to come back to London, where he was born, where he was raised, um, where his family is based as well. So it makes all the sense for him, which is why he was willing to make this move for us anyway. The only standing topic over the last week or two was kind of the wages and... It looks like he's going to be earning just over 300k a week. I think it's going to be around 310k a week. And that's been a big topic of debate for a lot of Chelsea fans. They're saying like we're doing the same thing we did with Lukaku where we're giving him overpriced wages. He hasn't done enough to justify those wages. He's not going to be our best um, attacker. And I think it's just waffle personally. Raheem Sterling comes into Chelsea and he instantly becomes our best forward. And I've said personally that until we get Timo Werner out of the club, expect any experienced uh, forwards or experienced signings in general who come to Chelsea to look at Timo Werner's wage packet and to say, I can do more than he can, so I should be getting paid more than, he sh than he's getting paid. Um, whether you agree or you disagree, from the player's perspective, they have a point. And from the club's perspective, their hands are tied. We're the ones that have Timo Werner on 260k a week when he's not playing like a 260k a week player. 
Someone like Raheem Sterling, who has been the second highest goal scorer for every single one of Guardiola's title winning seasons, has four Premier Leagues, which is more than anybody else in the club, who has succeeded in a system that is based around him in Liverpool and in a, in a system that isn't based around him in Manchester City, has played in two different kinds of systems. Like, I think it's more than justified that he comes in on that sort of wage packet. Also, Bowley doesn't mind. And from the looks of the wage packets of the other clubs that he owns in America, they are a bit boosted up. So, personally, I think Raheem Sterling is more than justified to ask for those wages. Obviously, he does have to show it on the pitch. But based on his CV, based on what he brings to the table, I wouldn't be too surprised if he was able to do that for us. So to me, 300k a week is completely fair. Considering his domestic achievements, considering what he brings to the team, considering the fact that he is at his peak, who else in our squad does deserve higher wages than him in our attack? I will say in our attack because if we're talking players in general, Thiago Silva has a conversation, Kovacic, Reese James, uh, Mason Mount to an extent as well. But to me, 300k a week is a completely fair wage. And again, with the attackers that we have, you cannot be complaining for Sterling looking up, looking down on all of them because he is better than all of them. But on to Raheem Sterling as well. He has set his sight on winning the UEFA Champions League with Chelsea and for competing with the Ballon d'Or, which is a very mad statement. I didn't expect him to be up there for the Ballon d'Or potentially, but maybe because we're going to be playing a system that does rely on him a little bit more because he literally walks into Cobham and becomes our best forward. Maybe it does get more out of him and you see the and you see that over reliance turn into more GNA for him, which would put him up higher in the rankings for that sort of thing. But I do personally think it's a bit unlikely to see him reach those sorts of heights. But I like the optimism. I like it. And let's just hope he shows it on the pitch. Um talking about what he brings to us on in the pitch, actually, what people have been speaking about for the most part, which I do understand, is that he was in a Manchester City team that churns out excellent chances for fun. And it's very hard not to get good numbers in that squad. I could be in that Manchester City squad and probably bag 10 goals a season as a bare minimum. So I do take that into account. But what people seem to overlook about Sterling is his ability to create chances. And not necessarily through assists as well, through also drawing in fouls that win free kicks, that win penalties as well. He has registered an assist for Manchester City on average once every four games for Man City. Also has won 18 penalties since the beginning of the 16-17 season. And the same Chelsea have done as a squad since the last two seasons combined. So that equals to more penalties, which could equal to more goals, maybe for Sterling because he is a penalty taker as well. Maybe even for Jorginho, you might see Jorginho make a run for top goal scorer like he did back in 2021. But again, it all depends on who comes in. In terms of like our biggest bane as well, which is low blocks, this is where Sterling comes in as well. His dribbling, his electric pace, his agility has both been brilliant for Manchester City. And we've seen it for England in the Euros as well. He can operate on the counter-attack. He can also accelerate quickly enough to upset low deep sitting low, bo low blocks. And he can also do it with good dribbling with good ball control and with also a good football IQ as well. So he will get himself into the right positions. He will know when to time his runs perfectly. And that will only work towards our detriment when it comes to breaking down those low blocks as we genuinely lack someone who can penetrate the box through direct runs, through direct dribbles. We don't have a player that could do it. Maybe hudson Adoy. And he's good creatively in that aspect, but he lacks it in terms of finishing. And Sterling is a lot more well-rounded in that regard. In terms of Pulisic as well, he can be a lot more explosive than what Pulisic can be because he's had to pull up on that a little bit more on, on account of all of the muscular injuries that he's had in the past. Um, in terms of Timo Werner, he's just better than him. People who say he's Werner 2.0, I literally do not understand. He does not... He, he has got levels clear of the... Agility, the ball control, the dribbling, the finishing, everything over Timo One. It makes no sense to me. And the stats also back him up that he's an excellent direct dribbler too. Sits sixth in the entire Premier League for carries into the, into the penalty box. And like we said as well, footballing IQ. His build-up requires players to time... Man City's build-up has required players to time their runs and passes perfectly. And he's going to bring that into the Chelsea squad, which can only work towards our benefit as well. 
Also, if you add better forwards around him too, like we said, there are Ronaldo talks, which are seeming to only get stronger and stronger by the day. Rafinha seems very likely because Barca simply cannot afford what we're offering, especially at the initial fee that we're offering as well. That could be an entire front three. You will have Sterling with the movement and the direct dribbling. You'll have Rafinha with the direct dribbling and the creativity as well. Sterling will give you that creativity too. And they will give you chances. And then if you have Ronaldo in the middle, we are cooking. We are cooking supreme good food in that front three. So guys, like, stay optimistic. Stay good. But I am very excited about this transfer. Let me know your thoughts on Raheem the Jer German dream. I nearly said German. Raheem the Jamaican dream. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe to Chelsea Fan TV. If you guys haven't hit that like button by now, what are you guys doing? You guys have been here for the whole video, but you ain't hit the like button. Guys, smash the like button. Smash the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification. Let me know your thoughts on Raheem Sterling to Chelsea. And we'll be back for the next video. As always, like and subscribe. And up the chels.